Sono un italiano. Probably like many of you, I've been craving a fresh start. And not just for the day. I mean, let's face it, that can be done by having a lovely brunch with a special someone, especially if there's mimosas or bellinis involved. Good call. But I'm talking more of a, well, creative release and reconnection in my case, and maybe to some degree a spiritual one as well. I mean, after all, we have been through a lot, both individually and collectively as a society, and we've been left for the longest time in a point of reflection, if you would, looking back at best at our own photos or scrolling through our social media or that of our friends, and remembering trips we once took. But as things are opening up, there's the promise of a new day, the sun is on the horizon. Well, I thought tomorrow's journey should hit the road too. For me, Italy has always held a special connection. The coming of age of an adolescent boy of 15, traveling with his then 65-year-old step-grandfather, Gino. Oh, well, like me, he was a native New Yorker, born in the streets of Little Italy, which back then was a ghetto for Italian immigrant populations. Uh, but to me, he was, well, full Italiano. Passionato, <laughs> showing full exuberance for everything from my grandmother, the arts, uh, uh, the opera, food, everything in life that's beautiful. And for me, his grandson. His gruff stubble, even after newly shaved, would hurt my cheek when he kissed and embraced me, <laughs> which he did often. Uh, but that trip, you know, reconnected Gino to his Italia. And Fifty years later, after he had first traveled there as a boy, well, it brought us even closer together. <laughs> I mean, Gino and Italy were part of my DNA because both had served to take a boy in the making and introduce him to an experience that would shape a lifetime. Because of this, I knew my producer and I had to visit Italy for our latest project, Superheroes and Other Men, the art and practice of being a modern gentleman in a gender complex world. Click on the link at the end of this video to watch that trailer. I knew a trip back to Italy, starting in the capital city of Rome, was a chance to reconnect to that summer with Gino, when so much was awakened in me. It would also serve to reignite both my producer and me, creatively and spiritually. As a boy, I spent hours roaming, every pun intended, the ancient Roman form, and actually feeling history. It was my deep desire then, and still now, to stay in a place overlooking these ruins so as to fall asleep to the echoes of time and to awaken each day to a new discovery. My dream came true this trip, thanks to the rhinoceros, but not the animal, the hotel, and its charming staff. Located at Via del Villabro, in one of the oldest neighborhoods in Rome. The ruins were now just right outside my window. One of the cool things about our hotel 
is that it is one part art gallery offering changing exhibitions organized by the Fondazione Fendi. Yeah, that Fendi, a living Italian legacy, like the artists they were exhibiting while we were there. The art, in essence, was ours to enjoy, like a private collection, though we did have to share it with gallery visitors from time to time, and this really cool life-sized rhino. I nicknamed him Senor Salvador, after another artist he kind of reminded me of. The place is also part rooftop restaurant, offering epic 360-degree views. We shared those with diners, too, and with Senora Alma Fendi. Ciao, bella. But of course, most of all, the rhinoceros was our home away from home, offering us a truly fresh perspective with an apartment-styled hotel room. Sweet, literally 24 unique suites in all. Though the hotel is in an early 20th century palazzo, the interior has been completely renovated and made new by architect Monsieur Jean Nouvel. Uh, the design feels something between hip bohemian industrial loft living and ultra-modern avant-garde motel traveling. I kept having the feeling like I was connecting with one of my other superhero references. Good evening, Mr. Bond. As for the rooms, minimalistic but artsy, industrial yet cozy, with lots of airy natural light, chic but understated with subtle little touches and courtesies. And did I mention those fabulous 360 degree views overlooking some of the ruins? And here is what I love most of all, quietude. Oh, for a New Yorker, that's a treasure. But here's the thing. Everything was still just a quick walk away. And now I'll admit, our rooms tempted, lounging all day, just watching the murmuration of the starlings. Madonna, that's out our window, by the way. But by day two, we knew we had to get out and explore. My producer for her first time in the city, and me for my Romana Renaissance. Rome is a city of artistic splendor. It's everywhere. It dares to invite a unique perspective while still safeguarding and honoring its own founding fathers and all that they left behind. As a boy, I remember being struck with this sense that suddenly history and art were everywhere not merely relegated to the tombs of encyclopedias. As Americans, we experience art mostly by entering museums, and some folks, not even that. We enter with hushed tones and reverence, like one might visit a mausoleum, as if our mere presence is a violation of the art. In Italy? Well, you might do that during a church visit. Silencio, por favore. But otherwise, here, you live art, feel it, breathe it, even eat gelato next to it. Molto buono. My producer and I were enjoying that lifestyle from our hotel and all it offered to our daily promenades. Notre passeggiata. Offering deep reflection. Now look, you can get out the guidebook and make a beeline to see the Sistine Chapel or Michelangelo's other masterwork, the Pietà, and you should experience these marvels. But on your way, take the time to explore the many beautiful works, including the gardens and St. Peter's Square. Piano, piano, slowly. We visited and even filmed in the Vatican on this trip Oh, it is a cathartic experience, to be sure, in as much in a religious sense as it is for its art and architecture. And as such, it can be overwhelming. What I chose to do this time was focus on a few chapels and corners within the basilica, taking in each detail of the art, imagining the artist at work for hours, standing in silent reverence to artistic ability, craftsmanship, dedication, and 
discipline. Bravissimo. It led to deep discussions with my producer about the artist as gentleman, and even the church's own historic role in redefining and reshaping the concept of gentleman, demonstrated in its patron saints and the male-dominated pageantry of holy service. Padre nostro che sei in sia santificato. Right down to the pontiff's pantalooned honor guard, we even experienced a dinner with them one night that ended in the camaraderie of song. This is what is perhaps most profound in a visit to Rome, a moderated temperance, the adjustment to a different pace, to simply experience life, and in doing so, celebrate it. Rome is hectic and fast, and even abrupt at times, in a manner similar to New York. But around you, there is a balance. Perspective that calms things once more. Tranquilo. After all, time has stood still so long here that you must honor it by doing the same. As such, Italy invites intimacy, emotion, passion, it nurtures it in you. Sadly, you won't benefit from this by getting on and off some tourist bus. Me dispiace. So instead, I encourage you to walk around. Poke your head into courtyards. Look up. Lean in and take pause. Walk through the residential areas and see not only the flora and the landscaping of the city, but the balconies and terraces and the courtyards of the apartment buildings a stacked oasis of flowers, fruit trees, and plants. Madre Natura. Gino's love for plants came into perspective. He had taught me the names of plants and the meanings of many of the flowers, really teaching me the art of living and the art of romance in the process. Uno vero romantico. When it comes to shopping, Visit the smaller, off-the-path, non-tourist stores where craftsmen and tradespeople still practice their art today, like Jerry, making beautiful and unique signature goods that dare to inspire the development of personal taste and style. No fast and trendy fashion here. Quanto costa, por favore? Instead of moving from one selfie moment to the other, put away the cell phone and look, guarda, take it all in. Sit, siedi, at an outdoor cafe and remind yourself, ricordati, people here actually live like this on a daily basis. Italians at large nourish themselves with life this way, with equal parts flavor and passion, equal parts man-made wonders with their fair share of the divine creation of nature as well. But in order to nourish yourself like a Romano, pick a restaurant away from the tourist joints. Hai una tabla por due? Experience the true art of Italian cooking. Mangia. Simple, understated, but with every flavor to be savored slowly. Piano. And with a good vino de casa from the region, served equally without pretense. Ah, oh, bebe. <laughs> I was reminded of how it was here, in fact, that a finicky kid from America, with the blandest of tastes, would discover food, taste buds awakened as if for the first time. After dinner, be sure to enjoy one of the most truly magnificent experiences of a lifetime. Roma di notte, Rome at night. Oh, ma che bella città. It makes one immediately understand why the ancient Romans believed that no matter what happened around the world, or how many empires rose and fell, Rome would go on forever. And in so many ways, that is what Rome does to one's soul. It connects you to the continuity of time. It did so back in the day of my first visit with Gino, my grandfather. His Rome was my Rome, despite the generations. We did the same for my producer, who has her own distant but previously unexplored Italian roots uh, by way of Chile. She, too, felt the whispers of heritage. 
it reminded us both that despite all that we've been through or are still going through as a society and as a world, and despite any personal turmoil that we might be experiencing, you know, when you look out on this eternal city, all else is but passing. And this was my renaissance. Putting into perspective the first coming of age journey with Gino back in the day, to even my reawakening today, at an age probably a lot closer to the age he was back then. <laughs> And at the same time, giving context to so much, including the exuberance with which Gino went at life and at food. Oh, buona fiesta qui, ah, grazie, grazie mille, ah, buon appetito. But our travels, and no doubt my lessons to be learned, were not over. After another restful night at the Rhinoceros, our superheroes project would soon have us on the road again. Further exploration awaited, all part of our quest to understand not just the art and practice of the modern gentleman in contemporary society, but in essence, on the virtue of society itself and the value of, of self. Oh, thank you. Within that. I'm Jeff Oppenheim, and I invite you to join us on our future episodes as we move forward to Tivoli and also Pompeii and beyond. We also hope that you'll take a moment to like, share, and maybe even leave your own Romano experiences in the comment section below. Until then, ciao, ci vediamo, see you soon.